right. We're getting some participants in here. Hello, everybody. Perfect. Um, we, we are growing. Yeah. It's I'm awesome. gonna wait for everybody. Um or wait for that number to stabilize. Hello, everybody. I recognize some names. Good to see you. Or not see you, but see your names <laughs> on the screen. Right. And then hopefully maybe see you later. Yeah, I think when I looked last, we were um, up to about 56 participants. So we're getting to that number. We're getting close. Awesome. We're gonna hang out for a second, see if we have any stragglers coming in, but welcome. I hope everyone is doing okay in this strange new world we live in. And give it about another minute and then I will yeah. start with the introduction. Sounds good. If anyone else wants a fun little background, the UNCW Facebook page posted a link to a gallery of really pretty images of campus that you can put as your Zoom background. So makes me feel a little bit more like I'm on campus. Back at home. Yeah, you know, with the flowers and everything, like yeah. spring in session. Um, I hope that all of you get a chance to visit campus before you come here or already got a chance to because it's a really cool place, but. Definitely. All right. Well, all right, everyone. Um, I am. I'm Kelly Spanauer. I am a senior admissions counselor uh, here at the UNCW Office of Admissions. I hope everyone is adjusting well to the changes um, that are being made over the past month or so. Um, in our office, we have had to cancel all of our on-campus events, uh, basically due to the absence of a caution for really everyone at this time. But we did still want to offer you an opportunity to learn more about our campus at UNC Wilmington and the opportunities that we offer to our students. Uh, for this webinar, we have invited the Honors College to share with you an overview of their program. So at this time, I will turn that over to them so they can introduce themselves, um, and then I will just go over a few housekeeping items. Awesome. Um, so if Dr. Mel and Dr. Bingham want to turn uh, their videos and microphones on as well, they can introduce themselves. But hello, my name is Nikki Crucial. I'm the Student Services Specialist for the UNCW Honors College. I also was an Honors College student. I graduated in May 2019 and loved the Honors College so much that I immediately bugged Dr. Bingham to hire me. And now I get to spend all of my days working with prospective students and current students um, and sort of giving some insight from having been a student as well. Um, some of you may have gotten emails from me. If you've emailed the honors at uncw.edu inbox, I probably was the one who emailed you back. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to tell you all a little bit more about the Honors College. Hello, my, hi, my name is Eva Mel, and I'm the Associate Director of the Honors College. I'm also an Associate Professor in the History Department. I actually have been at UNCW for nine years now, but working in the Honors College uh, for, for about a year now. And welcome all today. Hello, uh, my name is Sean Bingham. I have the best job on campus, which is Director of the Honors College. I am also a faculty member in the Sociology Department. And um, really great to have you here. I know this is a, there's a lot of uncertainty happening, and so we hope to answer as many questions as we can. And I think you're gonna find, especially when you meet the students, that it's really a, just a great supportive, welcoming community, um, which we'll talk about in more detail in a little while. 
So just a couple of uh, housekeeping items for you as attendees uh, we wanted to share with you before we got started. Um, you are currently all muted, um, just so we don't get any feedback or background noises um, as we are presenting. Uh, but if you do have any questions, there are a couple of different options to share those. Uh, you do have the ability to see a Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. This will allow you to type out the questions throughout the presentation. I will facilitate those questions to the Honors College faculty at the end of the presentation, as well as to our student panelists. Um, you can also verbally ask your questions at the end of the presentation by just clicking the raise your hand button. Um, I can then unmute your microphone and you can verbally ask that question. So you have a couple of different options, but that should be it for me for now. Um, so without further ado, I will turn it over to Nikki and the uh, Honors College um, and let them get started. You want to start us off, Dr. Bingham? Sure. Uh, so I, I mentioned that I have the best job on campus. Um, not only do we have a wonderful staff, but uh, you're going to meet some amazing students. Uh, every day is different for me and my job because I work with students from every major, which is really unique uh, for a faculty member. And so we'll talk about that in detail. Uh, Nikki, if you don't mind moving to the next slide. Uh, so these are some um, reasons for joining any honors college that you may have seen before. Um, perhaps some of you have received this in the mail. And I'm not going to go through all of them, but big ones are really uh, number five to push you beyond your major. Um, certainly attention, a lot of personal attention. Our classes are capped at 20, which we'll talk about in a little while. And today is a great example of one benefit. Today is registration for current students. And so um, honor students get to register first days before their students. Uh, I will tell you in, in sort of highlighting the vein of personal attention, uh, I've been on the phone this morning, my own personal phone, um, with five or six students, and I've already talked to maybe four or five sets of prospective students' parents on the phone. It's a lot of high-touch um, outreach, and um, I, I will, if you come to know me, you'll learn that I'm a really self-deprecated person, but I think one thing we do really well, both at UNCW and in Honors, is to be incredibly accessible to you, and that's really a big part of the Honors experience is accessibility. Uh, so if you wouldn't mind moving to the next slide, please. Um, I mentioned interdisciplinarity already, uh, but a big piece of honors is to push you beyond your major. Uh, many students know what they want to do, some don't. I was one that changed my major a lot. Uh, but the idea of honors education, particularly at UNCW, is to connect your major with other disciplines. So building a context around your major. So if you are going to want to go into medicine, um, a great example of why you need a context around your major is if you've ever been to see a nurse or a doctor or a physician's assistant who has really bad bedside manner, you understand why skills in medicine are not the only thing that you need. If you've had a teacher or a faculty member uh, who knows the content but is just really bad at communicating it, you understand why you need to build a context around your skills. Uh, even if you're gonna be a business major, um, you need a lot of skills that involve psychology and communication. And even if you're out on the golf course closing a deal, you need to know about politics and history. Uh, those of you who are watching who want to study marine biology, uh, particularly in this area where we're dealing with Gen X uh, chemicals, you need to know how to talk about marine biology to the public, to people who aren't scientists, and be able to communicate what you're doing. So we really want to push you. Um, to connect your major to other areas, and we'll look at some courses later on that do that. Next slide, please. All right, a uh, big piece of honors really goes beyond the classroom, and, and that has to do with the community of honors. Up in the left-hand corner of your screen, you see Cornerstone, which is where honor students live for their first year. If you are from the Tri-County area here, uh, and you're gonna live at home, you do not have to live in honors housing. You do not have to live on campus. Uh, but if you're from outside that area and you're in honors, you do live in Cornerstone. Uh, and we will talk about in a little while events that happen in there. Um, we'll go into some detail there. Uh, in the bottom right hand corner, you see a picture from a trip that I led to London. Uh, these are almost all freshmen in the picture. This was a freshman trip that we did, um, which really demonstrates a, a, a great example of how community started for these students before they even stepped foot on campus. So before they took the first class, uh, they were on a trip where they got to meet other students. Um, 
travel with me, the director also of undergraduate research and the director of education abroad. And so for freshmen to have that kind of communal experience was very high access, uh, even before they began their first classes. All right, next slide. Uh, okay, these are uh, several areas that really move beyond the classroom where we want to push you. And, and this again is where we don't want to just bring in students who are good test takers or just who have a good SAT and who will just spend the next four years in the library. And so when you meet the students today, what you're going to see are students who are heavily involved in all kinds of things across campus, out in the community, and even abroad. And they are doing exactly what we want, which is to push you beyond the classroom and to connect the things that you're learning in the classroom outside. Um, and so you, you'll hear from students and also Dr. Mel about studying abroad. Uh, you'll hear the students talk about getting involved in the community. Um, we'll talk about some examples of undergraduate research. I will say right now, for now, that UNCW uh, is very focused on getting undergraduates involved in research. What that looks like really depends on what your major is. So if you're interested in theater, theater research will look completely different than if you're interested in marine biology. Or if you want to be a teacher, classroom research is going to look very different. Many students are not thinking about research right away, uh, but it's a way for you to help generate knowledge in your field and, and to build some skills beyond just you know, filling in multiple choice levels. Um, we really want to push you beyond the classroom, and you're going to hear some great examples of that in a little while. All right, next slide. All right, one example of context that links to the Senior Honors Project, what we call Honors Thesis, um, what you see on the screen is a great example of that. And this is a past student that I had who is now in med school, and uh, she was really interested in other things, as many honors students are. Many honors students double major or come in and do a major with two minors or keep up other skills that they're interested in, whether that's language or music or art. This particular student was really interested in photography, um, knew that she wanted to go to med school and had all the things that you need to get into med school, which if any of you are interested in med school, those things are obviously good grades, a good score in the MCAT test, the admissions test for med school. Uh, she had worked in a lab, so she had volunteered in a lab for several years. Uh, she had shadowed doctors. She had all those things, but she really wanted to set herself apart in the med school interview. Uh, to look different than the other students. And, and every other student is going to have all those things that I mentioned or else they're not going to get into med school. So she put together a thesis where she was uh, using photography and, and particularly anthropology and photography together to engage in a photo ethnography. So she spent a year taking pictures of the patient experience. She had permission to do this from both the patients and the hospital. And when she went into her med school interview, the conversation wasn't, how did you do on your MCAT or what did you get in your chemistry class? You know, why did you get an A minus or a B plus? Can you talk to us about that? It was, let me talk to you about how I understand the patient experience and here's how. And so she pulled out the portfolio when they asked about her senior thesis and was able to walk through and put context in real world situations around her experience, really demonstrating, I know what I'm getting into. I'm the human side of medicine, I'm not just a good test taker. Um, I really have a broader context with, about the vocation of medicine. And so when I say building a context around your major, this is really a good example of what I'm talking about. Next slide. Dr. Mel, would you like to take over? Yes. So hi again. Um, I'm going to talk to you a, a little bit about kind of the honors curriculum and what or how honors classes uh, look like. If you see the colorful three circles there that's intended to represent for you visually um, how the curriculum works if you're thinking well how many more hours is honors going to represent for me can i still double major if i want to the answer is not many hours and the answer is yes many of our students double major and have minors and finish honors and the way to think about this is that you all will have to complete three components in your curriculum. You will have to complete your hours in your major. You will have to complete hours in general education, what we call university studies, and then hours in honors. The good news is that uh, the courses, many of the courses you will have to take for honors um, will help you um, also check other boxes. So you're gonna be taking classes in honors that at the same time, will count towards general education and will count towards your major. 
So at the end of the day, you are looking at taking an extra eight or 11 hours in addition to your general education and your major requirements. And what happens in honors classes? Or why can you expect in honors classes? Well, uh, all our classes are capped at 20. But usually you have less than 20 classmates in a classroom. So as you can imagine, right, that leads to a much better or a very different learning environment. And honors classes, as the student panelists might tell you, uh, they don't mean more work. It's just a different type of work. It's a challenging, different type of work, right? But if you have, again, 20 students or less, right, there are a lot of things that are gonna happen there that cannot happen in a class, say an introduction to chemistry or introduction to psychology with 50, 100, 150 students. If you only have 20 classmates, you're gonna be able to engage deeper uh, with the class material. There's gonna be a higher amount of class discussion, interaction with faculty members. And there's also, I'm a faculty member, right? So from my point of view, I can do so many different assignments and I can develop many applied learning or experiential learning assignments that I cannot do in bigger classes. So it's common that in, again, general education classes that are honors at the same time, that you have field trips. Um, for example, there is a class in philosophy and religion where the instructor will take you to visit a mosque, uh, a synagogue, um, another uh, Christian church, right? And then discuss about it. Those are experiences that you cannot have in a class that is maybe 50 or more students. Uh, you're gonna be able to engage, discuss primary sources, Again, from the point of view of a faculty member, is the best scenario, right? Because I can develop a pedagogy that I cannot in a bigger class, and that's beneficial not, not only for my own satisfaction, right? But it's beneficial for, for the students, right? Who are receiving uh, that knowledge. Um, again, some of the classes you will be taking with honors, again, will double count towards that general education requirements. Other honors classes uh, are specific, particular to the honors requirement. And I'm gonna show you, uh, Nikki, if you can please move ahead. These are some titles of again, honors classes that you would not be able to take, right, if you were a regular student. And these are the classes where um, a lot, they are very innovative as far as the topics go. This is when we ask faculty, hey, what is that class? What is that topic that you have been wanting to teach for a while, but you haven't been able to because in your department, you don't have a course code or a course shell for that class? Come here to honors and you can um, teach that class. So the topics are, they rotate uh, for the most part every semester. They are very innovative, interdisciplinary for the most part. Many times we have uh, two faculty members from different disciplines teaching about the same topic but from different perspectives so right you can imagine uh, the right the benefit for the student uh, for the student in that regard and these sometimes are classes also that um, capture the latest research that some faculty member is doing um, so again they are cutting edge uh, in many in many occasions some of the classes i would like to highlight from this slide that you have here and let's see well, Dr. Bingham can talk about his own class later on, but there is, for example, HIV and AIDS in culture. That is one of the team taught classes. So you have a professor uh, from the biology department and a professor from the theater department talking about HIV, but from two complete different perspectives. Medical humanities, that's another class and that actually will offer almost every semester. That's also another class that represents what Dr. Bingham was saying about giving a context around your major, because it's focused on disease, um, science, medicine, but from every perspective that is not scientific perspective, right? So from the humanities. And other classes that uh, we have. Harry Potter, uh, obviously, is a very popular one. Right. We might send abroad to England in the next couple of years. We'll see. Mm -hmm. And we have, well, Dr. Binga, maybe you can talk about the next app and the connections class. Sure. That's, uh, that's another example of team talk class, the connection. Uh, so the next up course is a, is a studio class for students to think about uh, what they might write their thesis on and how to approach faculty. 
Uh, and also to think about graduate school. It's a one credit class we meet once a week. And so we get them to think about personal statements. Um, how do you approach faculty? How do you reach out to faculty at institutions where you might want to go to graduate school? Uh, the Connections class is a really interesting course that really goes back to the context slide that I showed you all earlier, um, which looks at the connections between art, science, and mental health. It's a course uh, that any student can take, but it's particularly geared or made for students who want to go into medicine or social work or psychology or psychiatry. And it takes place in the Cameron Art Museum, which is Wilmington's uh, art museum. And students uh, don't need any background in art whatsoever, but the idea is to bring people with PTSD, Alzheimer's, dementia, uh, maybe veterans into the museum. And students are facilitating discussions about what those clients are seeing and then studying through the course, the connection between art, science, and mental health. So again, it builds a context around some of the disciplines and careers they might want to go in. Uh, the course above it, the Barrier Islands course, is taught by the director of the Bald Head Island Conservancy, who used to be a faculty member at UT Austin and now is the director of the Bald Head Island Conservancy. And so it links uh, Barrier Island studies, so research of uh, Bald Head Island, so field methods, um, with the politics of the island and even the economics of it. So again, getting students to connect their interest areas to other disciplines. Uh, one last one, the Road to the White House um, is a course obviously on the election and then we actually uh, go to DC over our fall break. So another really interesting course, uh, which is any political science professor dream class to teach. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to add to that that most of the classes you see in this slide will be offered in the fall, next fall and next spring. So, you know, many of you could take advantage of several of these classes if you were to come here. Uh, and one, one thing to add to what Dr. Mel said is, um, you know, those extra honors hours, those honors classes count towards your electives. They're not extra classes that will keep you here another semester. Right. Every student needs electives, and so those just get wrapped into that. It doesn't mean that you're staying here an extra semester at all. All right, next slide. Okay, this is... Um, these are students' words that come from a design thinking class that I taught where we were teaching them to solve whatever problem they had chosen using metaphors. And so the metaphor that I gave them um, was to describe the honors experience. And so you see here some explanations or some descriptions. Um, one of them says the honors experience is like eating a bland three course meal followed by a dessert with every flavor imaginable, uh, an open door, right? Taking a super fun walk with like-minded people only to realize you're hiking Mount Everest. Uh, it's both good and bad, right? Uh, so really, we're, we're looking for um, an open environment where students are encouraged to make leaps across disciplines where they support each other. Uh, and really important to keep in mind that even though honors, I think nationwide, particularly in high schools, has a particular reputation, um, this could not be a more welcoming and inviting and accessible environment. And we work very hard to make sure that that's so. Um, but I have to say that students really do a lot of that, that cultural work because there are so many of them. And you're going to see in a little while, I mean, these are some of the most kind, inviting, and accomplished students that you will meet. Um, and so, you know, we do our best to create that culture, but they really do the bulk of that cultural work. All right, next slide, please. Um, we also want to connect you across campus. I don't need to spend a lot of time on this slide because the students will talk to you about all the things that they're doing. But I would say that if you look at a lot of the clubs and organizations on campus, uh, almost all of them have honor students involved, if not leading those organizations. So what we really want to do is increase the surface level of what you would consider education to get you involved, not just on campus, but out in the community. All right, next slide. Uh, this is a fantastic student who could not be nicer. Uh, so when I say that Honors is filled with supportive students. This is a great example of one who came in as a freshman, got involved in what you see on the bottom of the screen, the Center for the Support of Undergraduate Research and Fellowships, which is housed in honors, but open to any student. Uh, that is a office that supports you as you apply for national fellowships, and as you might seek on campus to do undergraduate research. This student, Amanda, applied for a NOAA Hollings scholarship, which many of our marine science uh, students apply for in marine biology. She won a NOAA Hollings, and that paid for her to go to Oregon and do research, and then gave her some tuition money as she came back as a junior. 
she rolled that success into winning a Fulbright award. And now she is, uh, or still is in England. She stayed over there uh, to get a master's in physical oceanography for free, paid for by the Fulbright organization. And part of that Fulbright success was built upon the success of smaller awards that she won, including uh, the Noah Howlings Award. And so there is a mechanism in place to support you as you come to UNCW through applying for these kinds of awards, um, both informally and formally. And probably the biggest piece of that is other students themselves helping you apply. Um, I did see Amanda helping other students after she had won the Noah Howlings Award, helping them apply uh, and put together their application, which is an incredible resource. Next slide. Nikki, you want to take this? Sure. Um, so one of the things we do in the Honors College is we try to make sure you have an opportunity to get outside the classroom um, just for fun and for enrichment and also to spend time with your fellow students. So one of the things we do is that we purchase tickets every semester for different cultural events happening around town. Um, so there's a lot of different performances that even come on campus, Keenan Auditorium whether it's a dance performance, whether it's plays, concerts, uh, the Second City Improv Troupe out of Chicago, I think, comes, I think, pretty much every year. Uh, we had David Sedaris last year, who was super funny. He's a, a writer. Um, so we have tickets for all of those things uh, that honor students can, can claim for free. Um, we also try to put together our own events and outings. Uh, so early last fall, we took an outing together to the Cameron Arts Museum. We went to the Fort Fisher Aquarium together. We put together a Habitat for Humanity Volunteer Day. Um, honestly, we're pretty open about that kind of stuff. If somebody says, hey, can we do this kind of event or trip? I'm like, yeah, let's do it. Let's get 20 people signed up and go to, I don't know, downtown on a trolley tour or something like that. Um, so we try to do things like that so that you can have time to see things off campus and you know, outside the, the, the world of UNCW, um, but also to build fellowship with your fellow students. Although the students are really good at doing that themselves. Uh, for example, in Cornerstone this year, um, which is the, the residence hall for freshman honor students, um, a couple of students put together something that started calling C3 Kitchen. And on the third floor kitchen, every other Friday night, they started cooking meals for each other. That was something that they totally did all on their own, which was really cool. And then we swooped in in February and um, sponsored one of them and had a board game night. So uh, really a variety of activities that you can do through us, although that's certainly not the, the end of different things you can find to do on campus as you'll hear from our students later. So um, study abroad, we don't require students, honors students to go abroad or you know to do any trip but we certainly encourage you to do so and you would likely want to do it uh, because well one every semester there are going to be four or five different opportunities for you to take a class and at the same time go abroad on a trip somewhere you're going to hear your classmates doing so and seriously once you go abroad if you have never been abroad once you are uh, you're never going to see your country again the same way that you did before. So it's certainly a worth experience. Um, these trips, again, are attached to a class. So you're getting credit, sometimes three credits, sometimes one credit. Uh, these trips can happen, uh, like Do Do Dr. Bingham's class can happen at the beginning, uh, before the class meets. So it can happen in August. And then you have the whole rest of the semester uh, to incorporate the experiences of that trip into the curriculum of the course. Sometimes the trip can happen in December after classes are over. We are talking about between seven and 10 days, maybe. Uh, most classes though happen in the spring, uh, over spring break, so a week in March, and sometimes in May after classes uh, are over. In the slide here, you see some examples of recent trips. Uh, obviously this semester we could not um, implement any of these. I, for example, had planned to take uh, my students to Spain. I'm teaching a class now in this spring that checks three boxes for students, right? It's an honors class, so students get uh, three credit hours for honors. It's also a general education class. It's an introduction to history and also they get to go to Spain, right? And I'm going to do it again next spring, uh, hopefully, right? I'm sure everything will be fine that time. But uh, next year we have courses planned to go to the UK, different places in the UK, one of them, two of them to London, Costa Rica, Spain, Peru, uh, Norway, 
and possibly Denmark um, since they couldn't go this year. And yeah, I think Nikki, if you can move on to the next slide, I think we have another. Okay, so Dr. Bingham, I don't know if you care to add anything to your own class and abroad experience. Uh, sure, just that um, it was a fantastic experience. It was again an experience where you had the director of education abroad, the director of undergraduate research uh, with students so that you're an incoming freshman and you get to sit next to the director of undergraduate research um, who is in, in that middle top picture is sitting on the left um, with the bow tie on. Uh, that was a high tee that we had in London. Um, this was a core, an interdisciplinary course that I taught, um, which is really the flip side of a, of a marketing class. So, so how are we marketed to? So we talk about impulse buying and shopping and, and how if you're in an Ikea, why you can't get out and why it was designed that way. And so London was a really great place to explore that. Um, but you really get to know students in a different way. Um, and, and, you know, you get to talk about all kinds of other things and just class stuff when you're traveling with students. I, I typically go on three to four trips a year with students. It's a great way for them to get to know us outside the classroom. Um, and, and, and if you are going to be going to a faculty member and asking for a recommendation letter, um, now I know all of these students in great detail. Sometimes I know more things about them than I would like to know, um, but it really is a fantastic part of our job. And I will say one more quick thing about this slide. Uh, I rushed through college very quickly. I graduated early. And I have some regrets about that, which I'll be happy to talk to some of you offline in detail. Uh, I did not go abroad, and I could have, and I will forever be going on trips like this to make up for the fact that I did not. All right, very quickly here, um, we've got a number of partners uh, outside of campus, out in the community. These are three examples. I mentioned the Bald Head Island Conservancy class. I mentioned our art museum class. Um, we do from time to time get uh, organizations who want interns connecting with us. This is one example, Northwestern Mutual, who has a robust internship program with the school. And they do reach out to us to try to find students. More recently, I've had a film festival uh, organization uh, out in the community in Wilmington reach out to me to try to find some students to do some work for them. So uh, oftentimes, community organizations in Wilmington will reach out and they want the best of the best. and so they will typically call the Honors College. All right, these are some examples of Honors Senior Projects, which we also call theses. Um, we don't use that term to scare you. Um, what this really is, is, is a prime example or a prime way for you to create a project of your own making with your dream team of faculty uh, that is something that you would be very excited and passionate about getting up on a Saturday morning to do. And it really gives you a story to tell about yourself uh, when you go out into the job market or you want to go to grad school um, that allows you to talk about what you can do, what you're interested in, what your skills are, what you've built that goes beyond just holding up a transcript and saying, here are my grades or sending an electronic transcript. That's a pretty boring story. Uh, these stories are much more interesting and, and allow you to tell a much deeper story about yourself in terms of who you are and what you can do. You see some diversity here of disciplines. Um, so you've got economic stuff, you've got stuff from psychology and education, uh, you've got um, Hurricane Florence topics, uh, the, the Dear Kennedy Spirits is a creative writing student. The branding of craft breweries was not a student testing out craft breweries, uh, they were studying graphic design. And so what a thesis looks like really depends on what your discipline is uh, and what your background is. All right, the last thing I think that I want to say is uh, really honors is about conversations. As we mentioned before, and Dr. Mel mentioned specifically, when you have a class of 20 students, uh, you can have conversations in ways that you can't if you're in a class with 50 or 80 or 100. I moved from a large Research One university where uh, at one point I was teaching 300 students in a class. It is really hard to have a conversation in a class that big. If you're in a class of 15 to 20, it's very easy to have conversations and you can teach in a much different way. Um, but those conversations spill outside the classroom in many ways, whether it's informal, whether it's because I know a student by name because they're in a class of 16 and I see them on campus and we stop and talk, 
or whether it's I see them in uh, the Starbucks on campus and we start talking about thesis. Some of the best thesis committees I've ever been on have emerged from a random and informal and unplanned conversation that took place somewhere on campus or even off campus. So uh, really wherever you're looking, think about you know, what access do you have to these kinds of conversations, uh, particularly as a freshman. Um, I, I will say, sort of a, as an add-on here, um, we started a first year research experience and that is research opportunities for freshmen at UNCW. And this is our second year of doing it. 90, almost 90 faculty came forward to volunteer that they wanted to work with freshmen. That is incredibly rare. Uh, there are many schools where maybe it's twice as big as UNCW, but you might have five to 10 faculty come forward and say, I wanna work with freshmen. And that is because these faculty are interested in getting to know you, finding out about what you're interested in, what your passions are, and helping you get there. And that must happen beginning with conversations. Nikki, take it away. Uh, yes. So, like I said, I was an honor student, um, and I wanted to take a little bit of time to tell you all about the experiences I got to have just because I was an honor student. Um, so on the top left, do you see that's a picture of me in Iceland, which was an honor study abroad. It was a one credit hour class and we spent the semester talking about happiness and the psychology of happiness and how different factors in a society contribute to it. And then at the end, we went to Iceland for a week because Iceland is actually one of the happiest countries in the world, fun fact. Um, San Diego and Boston were actually two conferences that I got to go to because of honors. I was actually presenting my thesis research, which my thesis, you can see a little bit on the poster on the bottom there, uh, was about the chilling adventures of Sabrina, which I don't know if any of you have seen the Netflix series, but it's based on a comic book. And my thesis was um, about the two of those things. So I got to present at the National Collegiate Honors Council Conference in Boston and honors funded all the travel for that and took several honor students there. And I also got to present at Comic-Con in San Diego, which was really cool. Fun fact, San Diego Comic-Con has an academic conference attached to it, which I did not know. I'm a giant nerd, so getting to go to Comic-Con was a really cool experience that also, you know, I got to present my research and that was also funded by C-Surf. Um, there's also the Asheville Spring Break trip down there, which I actually went on last spring, um, and just lots of cool experiences that I had in honors. I met my all-time best friend in an honors class, my fall semester freshman year in a Gothic literature class, which I'm not guaranteeing that will happen to you, um, but you'll notice, I think among some of our panelists even today, there are some pretty strong friendships formed partially because of honors, I think. Um, and just, you know, spending time in the lounge, um, growing close with our different faculty and administrators. Um, yeah, there, there's a lot that I did exclusively because of honors and a lot that I did that was not 100% because of honors, but honors encouraged me to do and sort of gave me the tools to do it. Um, so yeah. Happy to talk if anybody has questions about any of those things, but I would rather turn the spotlight to our panelists in a couple minutes here. Um, these, this is the contact info for the three of us, Dr. Bingham, Dr. Mel, and me. If you have any questions, um, you can also follow us on social media if you would like to. Um, you know, good, good place for some fun and some updates. We do have a short video for you that we think sort of encapsulates part of the honors experience. And then we will introduce our panelists and start answering some of the questions that y'all have dropped in the Q&A. So, let me see here. We're gonna go to this video. Okay, and I'm going to make sure that my audio plays my computer audio. Double check. Share computer sound. Yes, that's what I want. Okay, cool. We can all see the video, yes? My name is Savannah Miller. I am a senior, so I'm graduating in May 2020. I'm double majoring in biology and public health studies and minoring in Spanish. 
I am very passionate about the concept of One Health, which is the interconnectedness of animal, human, and ecosystem health. And so I'm really interested in gaining more research experience in that world. And so I wanted to pick a project that would be based on One Health. So not only looking at problems with the environment or problems with marine animals or just humans, but all of it intertwined and combined. And so this project focused on native Alaskan health. So it was kind of a really cool combination of all of it. And I got to study every single aspect of it. I went to Sitka, Alaska. It's in the southeast region, so it's really honestly more of like Canada because it's right next to Canada. And so it's a long strip of islands. My island only had about 14 miles of road, so I was kind of out in the middle of nowhere. Most of the day I would do data analysis, so I would go on my computer and work with Excel and Google spreadsheets as well as an online database that my lab puts all of the information onto. And I would help shuck the shellfish, I would help blend them, making like oyster and clam smoothies. It was kind of gross, but it was really fun. And then we would treat them with chemicals and then test them for neurotoxins, which is what my project focused on, was testing these shellfish for these neurotoxins that can cause paralysis in humans that eat that shellfish. And so it was really cool to actually do the testing of the shellfish and then work with the data to actually look to see, okay, is this an unsafe level? Are we seeing any trends? That kind of thing. I really enjoyed being able to apply what I've been learning in my academic courses to actual real life. Going and actually doing real research with a research group of people who have their masters and PhDs and do this for a living and realizing that not only am I using certain aspects of one course, but it's a combination of all the courses I've been learning. So I got to utilize things I learned from all of my chemistry courses, my biology courses to understand how shellfish might bioaccumulate toxins, also from different ethics and sociology courses because you can't just tell a native Alaskan community, hey, stop eating your traditional food, shellfish. And so being able to integrate everything that I've learned so far in school all in one project was, was really cool because it, it kind of shows you how your studies can pay off. And so I think having this experience really helped me realize how much more out there that needs to be done and how important it is to ex have those experiences and bring back that information to raise awareness in other places. And that's what I'm hoping to do with, with the experience I had this summer. I'm doing my honors thesis on this project and I'm gonna go present this research at a conference in New Orleans. And so I think it's really important to educate ourselves on that, to see what the next steps are in, in our little human world when really we're just one species amongst thousands, probably millions. And I just find it fascinating to learn new things. I love being a learner and I'm excited to see where I go. <laughs>
So it'll ask you like, what time do you like to go to bed? And how clean are you? And it'll try to match you with people who have sort of similar preferences on that end. Um, Julia, I don't see your face. I, can anyone else see me? Oh, you're there. Okay, I see, I see Julia. <laughs> I see your face. Okay, um, awesome. So I'm going to let the, the, the panelists um, go through and introduce themselves. Um, if each of you could tell us maybe, um, you know, what year you are, a couple of the things you're involved in, your major, um, and anything you feel like, I don't know, anything honors related about yourself you want to share, like what you've done with us or something like that, or anything that we've done for you maybe. So I'm going to, I'm going to mute myself and let y'all talk. Now we're really in charge. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I guess I'll start. I'm Kaylin Harrell. I'm a senior here at the Honors College um, studying marine biology and environmental science with a minor in chemistry. Um, I am currently doing my honors thesis um, on the effects of a parasite on oysters that are cultured at the Center for Marine Sciences Shellfish Research Hatchery. And also I've been on a study abroad trip related to honors. I'm also part of the study abroad ambassadors, the vice president of that organization. So I've studied abroad outside of honors as well. Okay, I'll go next. Um, hi, I'm Kat. I am a freshman at UNCW. I am a prospective public health major with a concentration in preclinical. And I think I just decided like an hour ago that I also want a double major in Spanish. Um, I am involved in UNCW CrossFit. I am a part of the Plastic Ocean Project. Um, what's it called? Connection that we have through the school with the club. Um, I'm also in UNCW Surf Rider, which is another um, environmental conservation club. And I have been on the fall honors lyceum trip which is really fun and i'm surprised dr bingham didn't mention because he loves to talk about that um and yeah i've had lots of fun experiences with honors awesome i'll go ahead and go next um hi my name is julia singer i am a senior uh, marine biology major with a concentration in conservation and a minor in sustainability and I'm from Yardley, Pennsylvania, so I am an out-of-state student. And I've been in honors since my freshman year. So I lived in what was honors house when we were there. Um, and that was a really awesome experience for me because I love being surrounded by other like-minded like students and kind of getting engulfed in the honors experience that way. Um, I've been very involved in research since the beginning of my sophomore year. And one thing that's cool about UNCW is that you can participate in research within your major, but can also do interdisciplinary projects. So my first directed independent study was a project working in the psychology department and combining that with environmental science, which is another interest of mine, to look at the impact of environmental education on elementary school students. And then that was really where I fell in love with research. And so I continued working on different research projects throughout my time at UNCW and did another direct and independent study and then ended up getting a uh, Center for the Sport of Undergraduate Research and Fellowship uh, summer research grant. So I was able to get paid over the summer to go out and kayak and learn about turtles, which was really fun, which then folded into my honors thesis, which I'm actually going to be defending in 14 days. So it's getting close. And for that, I am working with um, local crabbers in the Cape Fear region and looking at ways that we can decrease diamond back terrapin bycatch by working with the community. Uh, and that also was supported by a CSERP fellowship. So there's a lot of different ways you can get funding for your projects and scholarships through research, which was really awesome for me. Um, like Kaylin, I also studied abroad. So I did a semester in Australia at James Cook and I also did a short term project in Belize where I got to study the upside down jellyfish and the reaction to light which was another really fun research project that I got to participate in. And then some other experiences that I've been involved in at UNCW are I work for our Association for Campus Entertainment and have worked for UNC Weekends, which are both programming boards on campus. So we have to put on all the fun events and help keep students engaged and involved. And I've also been in some just random clubs that kind of sparked my interest. So I was on the executive board for the Stand Up Paddleboard Club two years in a row. And I helped start a swing dance club on campus just because it was something that I was really passionate about and also have worked with the local Wilmington Earth Day Festival. And I would say my favorite thing about honors, in addition to research, because I talked about that plenty, is just the ability to take interdisciplinary classes. Because like I said in the beginning, um, 
both my major and my minor are very heavily science-based, but they're not medical, but I was able to take multiple classes in medical humanities and things like biotechnology and society, which were classes that I never would have been able to take otherwise. And it allowed me to connect with students from outside my major, which was a really enjoyable experience for me. I'll go next. Um, my name is Nikki D'Alessio. I'm a junior this year um, in the Honors College, obviously. Um, I'm a communication studies and Spanish double major. Um, some things that I am involved with at UNCW. So um, I have been an RA for two years. So last year and this year I was an RA in honors housing um, and I lived in honors housing my freshman year. So I've spent three years <laughs> living in honors freshman housing, which has been a really awesome experience and really allowed me to kind of stay in that honors community and stay really involved with honors through being involved with the freshmen who are kind of getting started in honors and helping mentor them. And also being able to stay, um, you know, in really close contact with Dr. Bingham, Dr. Mel, and all of the honors staff, um, which has been a really awesome experience. I'm also a student ambassador, so I give campus tours through that organization. Um, and we also work with alumni, so we go to different alumni events, donor events, really cool fancy dinners with really yummy food, things like that. Um, and then I'm also involved with the Association for Campus Entertainment with Julia. Um, I am the vice, the vice president of marketing this year in that organization. So I get to help kind of create all of their marketing materials and oversee our marketing team, um, help manage our social media, um, and just work with the rest of the leadership team to kind of run that organization, which has been super, super fun. Um, as far as honors goes, um, like I said, I've been really involved in the community through being an RA and everything like that taken a bunch of honors classes, which have been really cool because I've been able to kind of branch out from the general areas that I've been involved with. And it's been really nice to have those smaller classes as well. So even when I was taking like a history class or something like that, to satisfy a university studies requirement, I still got to have the smaller section. I was with all other honors students um, and I got to really get to know the professor and kind of just get a more um, kind of one-on-one -on -one smaller experience, which is especially good for those kind of introductory level classes, because a lot of times they'll end up being um, like bigger classes. So it's nice that honors kind of caps them um, that way. Um, like I said, I'm a junior, so I'm coming into my senior year. So I'm getting started kind of getting in gear to start my honors thesis, which I'm really excited about, because um, I'm trying to kind of combine my Spanish and my communication studies majors and kind of do something interdis interdisciplinary that combines both of my interest areas. Um, so yeah, I'll just say honors is a really awesome community kind of within the larger UNCW community. community um, and that's been the biggest thing for me. And I know Dr. Bingham talked towards the beginning of the presentation about them being accessible and he is not lying. They're very accessible um, to us just to kind of be able to help us out. I talked to Dr. Bingham on the phone the other day about my thesis. Um, so they're very accessible. They really just wanna be there to help us out whether it's with honors related things or not. Um, I know Nikki is also always sending us like really cool events to go to and just doing cool programming and things for honor students to stay connected with each other. So it's really an awesome community. Um, but yeah, that's on me. So Kelly, if you want to finish us up. Yeah, so I'm Kelly. Um, I'm the last panelist to introduce themselves, which you guys already know. Um, I'm a junior here at UNCW. I'm a double major in anthropology and history with a minor in Spanish. So I kind of got a lot of my hands in a lot of different pots there. Um, I'm incredibly involved in the Honors College. I've been an honors mentor since my sophomore year. So we work with the freshman students. Yeah, I was Kat's <laughs> mentor. So it was really, it was really fun to see her on the panel. I got really excited. <laughs> Um, but I work with all of the 110 classes, so it's basically your, like, how to college class that you get to take, um, in your first semester, um, so it's really interesting because you kind of get to choose, like, a, uh, different section, so it focuses on stuff, so Kat and I, this past year, was on, like, the power of story, so I got to listen to a lot of my students talking about, like, personal different events from their life, so it was really fun to watch that and, to, um, see them kind of come together. And I'm taking on a bigger role in that this year. I'm becoming a coordinator for like the general honors mentor. So unfortunately for you guys that are like coming in as new students, I won't necessarily get to be in a classroom with any of you, but you'll probably see me. I'll be like coming into the different classes and stuff. But that's been really cool. I'm also an ambassador with um, Nikki. So it's been, that's been really cool. I got to help create a career panel, which Dr. Bingham actually came and talked at one time. So that was super fun. And then I've been on a couple of other different things. I just like, got recalled from Peru. I was studying abroad there this semester and uh, I am back in the U.S. now for all the coronavirus craziness. Um, 
and I'm on the anthropology club and have done a bunch of other different things. Like pretty involved at UNCW and I would definitely say like my favorite thing about honors is definitely the accessibility and like the willingness of Dr. Bingham, Dr. Mel, and Nikki to like listen to us. Like I literally got this honors coordinator position because I asked Dr. Bingham if he would have a meeting with me and was like, hi, I think that we should have this. And he was like, I think you're right. And I was like, cool. So I'm currently working with Dr. Mel to like iron out like what that position actually looks like. So it's been an incredibly like awesome and rewarding experience to like get to create that. Thank you all very much. Um, I just want to read out a couple of questions that we answered in the Q&A part, just so we make sure that they all get heard. Um, if I can, how many honors classes will we take every year? Um, probably, we, we try and get you to take one or two every semester until you finish the requirements, um, but it's not overwhelming. You'll never be in all honors classes every semester. Um, there's no fee to be part of honors. We have about 650 students overall in the Honors College. The incoming freshman class, we're expecting to be about 200 people. There are additional financial aid and scholarship opportunities for Honors students, and we award them very frequently to upperclassmen as well. Um, so just because you may not have gotten an award from us specifically this year does not mean that you will never. Um, it's quite common, especially, you know, you stick with us, you get involved. We like to see that. Um, the next time you can apply for the Honors College, if you have not been admitted for the fall, will be after that first semester. Um, Non-honor students can live in Cornerstone Hall. Um, Cornerstone Hall has about 250 beds, and we're only expecting 200 some honor students. So there will be 50-ish non-honor students who are in Cornerstone. So if you have somebody in mind you really want to live with, uh, if they're willing to live with you in Cornerstone, you can definitely do that. Um, and you only live in Cornerstone your freshman year. Nikki, cool. make sure you look at the opening questions. We have a couple more uh, that just yeah. came into the Q&A as well. Yeah, um, okay, so we have one. Will there be other trips for the Honors College um, since the current ones have been canceled? Yes, of course, we do at least four or five international trips every year and you know our fall break and spring break trips. Really, at, at this point, it just depends on when all of this COVID-19 stuff resolves when we're able to do them again, but we will absolutely do them again. Um, the deadline to decide if you're attending the Honors College is just the same as the general college decision deadline, May 1st. Um, transfer students can apply for the Honors College, but sometimes it's harder for you to complete all of our curriculum requirements if you have a lot of credit hours. So sometimes we recommend that you just do departmental honors, which is the senior thesis process, which is open to anybody. Um, yeah, if you have any questions about the honors experience or if you want to ask any of our panelists specifically, um, feel free to drop those. Um, I want to take a break from some of these, though, and, and ask our panelists, um, can you tell us each maybe a little bit about why you chose UNCW and why you chose to be part of the Honors College? Sure, I guess I'll start. Um, I kind of, throughout all of high school, had always been taking like more advanced classes, and so it almost seemed like easy to just go into an honors college for college. My, I think my parents sort of expected it almost. Um, I know a lot of students, if they're looking into an honors college, that might be the same, they might be having the same thing. Um, so, and then once I came to UNCW and got to visit and got to sit in with the honors college and talk to them about it, it really seemed like a really, really good fit. Um, the class sizes, especially for an honors college, getting to have class sizes of only 20 in a freshman class, like that's incredible. So that was something that really drew me in and the scholarship opportunities and the research opportunities. I didn't mention I'm part of the Wilmington Fellows. That's a subset of the Honors College you could get into later. And so that helped me get into all the research that I did. So those opportunities that are given to you through the Honors College, you might not get those if you weren't. So that's something to think about. Um, so actually, I didn't decide to come to UNCW and be a part of the Honors College till I'm pretty sure it was like five days before the May 1st deadline, I was pretty dead set on going to College of Charleston and being a part of their Honors College. I was looking at multiple different Honors Colleges at different universities. Um, but unfortunately, well, fortunately, I fell a little bit short on money for College of Charleston and I had to kind of reevaluate my options. And I came back and I looked at the UNCW Honors College and I started to do a little more research, get a little like 
more into what they were really about and talk to some of their professors and advisors and all that stuff. And honestly, I, and I'm not just saying this because I'm a panelist, but I found that there was a lot more that I was being offered through UNCW Honors College than I would have gotten at College of Charleston or any other school, not to name names. But um, even like socially, I, obviously I found a roommate actually for College of Charleston and because I was so set on going there and just like talking to them about what their honors college does socially doesn't even like compare to what we do here since we're such a like a tight-knit community and it's not just about like going to class and studying and all that stuff we really do a lot of stuff outside like we had like spaghetti dinners every Friday randomly and our, our RAs were like so good about doing like fun stuff for the holidays. Like we had a pumpkin carving contest for Halloween and just like random stuff like that. It just really like brings together the community a lot better. So it really could not have worked out better than it did, so. Something too, I think is, cause my major is communication studies in Spanish. So I'm like not a science person and I think coming into college, I, and I'm sure a lot of you guys that are watching probably also are like, okay, everyone's talking about research, like, and I know Dr. Bingham touched on it also about how research can look different depending on your discipline. Um, so the research opportunities are definitely a huge, huge perk of honors and definitely something that drew me in, um, even though I know that my research isn't going to look like a, you know, science experiment in a lab, it might be something different, um, but also just like kind of the general um, different opportunities that we get, like the different classes, the um, opportunities out in the community, and all that kind of stuff, and just the smaller, um, the smaller community within UNCW's community, because I know I was a little bit intimidated coming into such a bigger school than I was used to from high school, obviously, so it definitely provides that kind of smaller, more intimate community, um, and I also really like the idea of living in honors housing and being in the same residence hall with the people that I was in my classes with and kind of people that had the same sort of priorities as me. Um, so I guess I just wanted to say that so that it's like, um, while research is like a huge, huge, um, really awesome perk, it's definitely not the only one and you can get involved with research no matter what your discipline is. Yeah, I just second everything everybody else said, like. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, cool. my experience sounds a lot like Kaylin's as well. I think she covered everything I wanted to say. Awesome. Okay, we have a question. Have any of the panelists worked at CMS? And if so, are there many opportunities to work there or is it more specific? I'll start this one. Uh, there are a ton of opportunities to work, uh, volunteer, or do research over at CMS. Um, for those of you who are not prospective marine bio majors, uh, we're looking at the Center for Marine Science, which is a separate uh, like a separate location from UNCW, about 15 minutes away from our main campus. And so I have been working there for the past three semesters on what has been the continuation of one project broken down into a two credit directed independent study, a paid summer research project, and then my honors thesis. Um, so there's a ton of different opportunities to do work at CMS, either through direct research projects, or you can get uh, positions either volunteering or working in labs. And there's a ton of different opportunities out there, whether you're gonna make your own project like I did, which is working with, like I said before, crabs and the diamondback terrapins, or hopping on another project, but there's a ton of opportunities in our benthic ecology lab. And just, there's always new opportunities popping up. So Kaylin, do you have anything to add to that? I was gonna say, yeah, there's so many different labs. There's also the Mar Bionic Center. So that's more based on chemistry. So if you're someone who really likes chemistry, that's another facility that's out there that is incredible and amazing. So you've got like chemistry and regular biology. Julia really summed it up. There's, you can volunteer, you can be a part of an actual project and a team. Um, so it's just up to you and who you get to sort of talk to through your classes and then working for them in their labs there. Yeah, but just to paint you a picture of what my day looked like over the summer, um, that was the only time that I was directly paid hourly to work at CMS. In the spring semester for my DIS, it was a for credit project and then for my honors thesis um, I was getting paid a stipend through a fellowship program um, but for my summer project I was working under a graduate student who was looking at the comparison between diamondback terrapin abundance at different habitat types so I would get there just whenever high tide was so anytime from sun up to sundown and go on a two hour long kayak trip um, and just mark GPS points when, every time we saw a turtle or every time we saw a crab pot. So for that type of project, I was working a lot more in the data collection. And then 
in my thesis, I'm working a lot more on the data analysis. So while I did collect a lot of the data for that, um, there is a lot more behind the scenes work on that. So that's the type of thing where you could go out and collect data, but then also learn a lot about the statistics behind it and just kind of like completing the entire picture of what a research project might look like for a science major. I was excited about living in a suite or new dorm. Can you tell me the benefits of living in Cornerstone? Um, and I know a lot of you lived in Honors House. Feel free to talk about that too, because the layout is very similar, just on a smaller scale. Well, I can talk about Cornerstone <laughs> since I just <laughs> lived in there for a year. But um, so obviously they're building new dorms and new suites. So those are, I'm sure, going to be very nice. But I promise you Cornerstone is significantly nicer than some of the other dorms on campus currently. Um, I would say like it's always clean like I always saw a cleaning lady like in the bathroom or in the hallway and they're very friendly so <laughs> that's also a plus but um I mean it's definitely nicer to live in Cornerstone with other honor students because it makes it so much more convenient to study with them like I know plenty of times um we would have late night study sessions instead of having to worry about coming like all the way back from the library we could just go work in the common room um and it's just a better way to really get to know your peers that are around you. I had a couple friends that um, lived in the suites this year and they like constantly complained about how they wish they had signed up for a dorm because they didn't really get like the true dorm experience that most of the freshmen got. Um, obviously it might not be as glamorous as having your own room or whatever, but you definitely, it's easier to make more friends and more social connections when you're kind of just thrown into a giant house full of fun people who are, have similar interests in you and are most likely going to be in a lot of the same classes as you. Yeah, I can speak a little on Cornerstone and the whole kind of traditional residence hall thing too. Um, like I said before, I lived in Honors House my freshman year. I was an RA there last year and I was an RA in Cornerstone this year. So three years under my belt of living in the residence hall. Um, and I tell people all the time when I give campus tours or just people on the street, I will just tell people all the time that living in that traditional hall style is honestly the thing that I think made my freshman year and honestly everything after that as welcoming as it was and as um, I guess just like comfortable in terms of I met like Kelly, me and Kelly lived on the same pod in Honors House our freshman year. And we're still really good friends. Um, so I think that tells you something. Um, but it definitely was the thing that I still talk to like tons of people that I met in that building my freshman year. And then I was able to see as an RA for two years, all of those students kind of experience that same kind of community that I experienced and that I know everyone here can speak to as well. And anyone that you'll talk to in honors will tell you that the community in that building is unreal. Um, and I see that someone else is talking about being uncomfortable with the communal bathrooms. And this is something else that I yell about all the time is the communal bathrooms truly, I promise, are not as scary as they seem. I know it seems like a really drastic thing if maybe you're coming from your house where you're only sharing a bathroom with a few people or maybe you have your own bathroom. So it seems like this crazy drastic thing. I promise you get used to it a lot faster than you think. And as weird as it, as weird as it sounds, it's very good for building community like you see people in the bathroom all the time so you'll be brushing your teeth and like your friends will come in and you're hanging out with your friends and brushing your teeth um and you just kind of get to know people on the hall a lot faster just because you see them all the time um and there's also plenty of showers and toilets and everything in the bathroom especially in cornerstone the bathrooms are huge um so it's never like you're waiting for a shower or waiting for a sink or anything like that i never ever had to wait in three years never once had to wait for a shower um especially because everyone is on really different class schedules and just schedules in general so it's not like everyone on your hall is going to be in the bathroom at the same time um and kat mentioned a little bit the cleaning staff so we do have cleaning staff that cleans those bathrooms multiple times a day every day during the week so they're always very clean. It's not disgusting, like you're living in a pigsty. I promise they keep all the common areas super clean um, and they are really friendly. Um, but I really, and I promise this is not like just me talking because I have to, like this is truly three years of me living in these buildings and I can truly say that the community is completely unparalleled if you're living, which of course the suites and the apartments and everything are awesome. 
and the new buildings are also going to be awesome. Um, but I will say that living in the traditional kind of hall style, communal style is a really great way to meet a lot of people quickly and easily. And then you have your RA really accessible who's doing programs. So you can go and do fun things right in your building um, and kind of hang out with your friends that way. So I truly <laughs> would just say that living in the residence hall is, is really one of the best things that happened to me for sure. Um, and a great thing that Honors provides where you can kind of have that experience with Honors students. To add on to Nikki, I would say like 50% of the conversations, as weird as this might sound, that I had in Cornerstone were probably in the bathroom because that's how <laughs> frequently you see people going in and out of there. Mm -hmm. But yeah, definitely bathroom, not as scary as it sounds. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to chime in here quickly too um, from the old guy. <laughs> Uh, I went to a small liberal arts college of about 2,000 students, and I got put in a suite with the baseball team. And while I like baseball, uh, that was not conducive to what I wanted to do. Uh, I certainly couldn't study in my room. I could barely sleep in there. So uh, I think you're going to find, and I put this in one of the Q&A areas, that um, our students work hard, play hard, and they're going through a very similar experience as all these students have mentioned. Um, the other thing, and this is going to sound a little parental, but I'm a parent, so that's okay. Um, a couple times a year, I'll have students email me and decline honors because they want to live with a roommate that they've picked that they went to high school with. And typically, we'll have, you know, a 10-minute plus conversation about how, you know, these are the things you're turning down by deciding to live with your high school friend. Um, Priority registration, possible scholarships, community, smaller classes, access to resources that you wouldn't get if you weren't in honors. College is about expanding your circle of people, right? Um, mm -hmm. I, I've known many students who live with their friends in college and that goes well. I've known students who live with their friends in college and it does not go well. Um, but for those of you who that's an issue, you're thinking about, do I join honors because I want to live with this one person who when I'm... 44 I might not even be in touch with anymore think about you know why you're coming to college what you want to get out of it um, and be real with yourself because you know what we have had it's not frequent but we do have students turn honors down because you know they want to live with their friend that they met in the sixth grade and while I respect friendship you know really we want to push you to meet other people and this is about a new experience for you and so I would I would challenge you gently and kindly um, if you're one of those to so think about why you're coming to college and, and really what you want to get out of it and, and all the benefits that you might get. Yeah, and I'd also like to touch on that. So I lived in obviously the honor storm um, my freshman year and I probably had like the nightmare situation for all of you guys where like I had one roommate and then literally three weeks before we moved in, she found somebody else at orientation. And I was like, cool, so great. Now I have another random roommate that I have absolutely no idea who I'm going to live with. And it like turned out to be the best thing for me. Like I'm still honestly best friends with her. Like I lived with her and then four other people that I had met um, at UNCW in a six person apartment, which I don't know if I would recommend the six person apartment to like kind of talk to the person who asked the question about living spaces after freshman year. Um, six people is a lot of people to have in one space, but uh, I like lived in another four person apartment that I loved. So we do have on campus apartments that you're able to like live in after honors. I know um, they had an honors floor kind of for us in one of the upperclassmen areas. That was where I cho chose to live. And it was really nice because like our RA was also an honors student. So like if we ever had any concerns about that stuff, we could kind of go to her. Um, you definitely knew like a lot more people in the hall. Like a lot of them were the people that I had lived with like in honors the previous year. So it was really nice to like see people and say hi. Um, and then um, they have a couple other areas that are like that, that you can just live in generally, which is what I did this past year. Um, it's also super great. All the on-campus housing is really nice, um, even for upperclassmen. And then once you move, if you decide to move off campus, there's definitely a lot of options. Um, and you definitely get a feel for, I feel like, what are the best places to live and like maybe what are the places to avoid like when you're a student here like just by asking other people and like saying like super openly like hey like where do you live and like how do you like it <laughs> um, so people are really open and very friendly and definitely can be opinionated sometimes about um, sharing their opinions on like where to live but I definitely am a vote for on-campus housing I love it mm -hmm. and Cornerstone has the biggest rooms on campus just saying <laughs> Um, to add a, go off of what Dr. Bingham was saying, if you're concerned about 
kind of the Honors College limiting your social experience outside of the Honors College, not anything you need to worry about. I made plenty of connections inside the Honors College as well as outside of the Honors College. Um, I have a pretty like solid group of like girlfriends and half of them are in it and half of them aren't and we're all living together next year because that's just how it worked out. But you definitely like aren't just going to be seeing the people in the Honors College. It's very easy to go outside and make those other connections. And I will say too, something that you wouldn't necessarily think, but like Dr. Bingham was talking about random roommates and things like that. Um, it, I mean, of course you can try and find a roommate. I found a roommate on Facebook my freshman year and it worked out really well. Um, but like Kelly said, her random roommate also worked out fantastic. And I will say as an RA for two years, I, some of the best roommate pairs I've seen have been random roommates. Um, because I think a lot of people think that you have to be like this crazy, like best friends with your roommate and hang out 24 seven and everything like that, which some people are like that and it works out fantastic. Um, but the best roommate situations I've seen have been people that, you know, can hang out and have similar interests and get along really well, but aren't necessarily like attached at the hip all the time. Because sometimes it's good to kind of have your separate thing. So if you're trying to live with your best, best friend that you've known since you were 10, it's just, you might be worth thinking through kind of like, is that going to be the best thing for your friendship and for both of you like branching out once you get to school? Because you do want to take the opportunity to go out and meet new people. So sometimes if you're with a person that you've known for so long that's very comfortable, it's easy to kind of just insulate yourself in that little bubble, um, which is something I would definitely encourage you not to do because college is the time to really get outside of that bubble as much as you can and really push yourself, which can be really scary and really hard, but pays off tenfold in the end. Um, so definitely kind of just think about that critically when you're talking about roommates also. I'm not saying you have to go random. You can still find somebody online or something, however you want to go about it, but um, definitely kind of just keeping that in mind of you don't have to be the best of friends and attached to the hip with your roommate either. I can definitely attest to that. Like I mentioned in the comments, I was one of the people in the three-person rooms and I did not request that. I didn't even really know it was a thing until I got it. Um, I had requested a roommate that was like a random mutual friend of a friend. Um, she was in honors college, we had similar interests, so we were kind of like set on rooming together. And then we found out we had a completely random roommate that we had never met before, was from like five hours away from us, so we had no way to meet her. I didn't meet her till the day of move in, and now she's one of my best friends. Like, we're like three peas in a pod, we're all living together next year again. So, like, not all random roommate situations are horror stories. Are there some? Yes, but it's kind of just how you make it and how you make the best out of it, so. And they're few and far between compared to the good ones, I think. Yeah. And the RAs are there to help you if you have a bad one, so. <laughs> yes, you get a lot of support, for sure. We answered a lot of the questions um, via text. So hopefully you can all read those there, but if anybody has one that they feel like they wanted to get answered live instead or any additional questions. Um, I have one about AP exams that'll transfer automatically once you get credit for your exams. UNCW will take it, will take it for credit um, and you can look up on the webpage what things will transfer as. Um, but we, we are coming up on five o'clock, which is a hard cutoff for us. Um, so if we have any last questions, we can definitely take them. Um, oh, wait, can, I, can I chime in one more thing? How dare you? Uh, I know. <laughs> uh, I have the honors mascot here with me. Um, so what I wanted to say is what I actually tell every student that comes to visit us. And so some of the panelists and, and Nikki and Dr. Mel have heard me say this before, and that is wherever you're looking, think about how do these people make you feel when you're there with them or when you're talking to them or Zooming with them or on the phone, uh, because incredibly important. We tell every student to think critically and make pros and cons, but how you feel and how people make you feel on a campus is incredibly important. And so ask questions about accessibility. Uh, think about, you know, who's giving you their time because that time over the next four years is going to be incredibly important. And so wherever you're looking that I would say, think about that feeling is real because you may go to a place, um, and I made this mistake in graduate school, going to a place with a brand name, but it just didn't feel good when I got there. There was a lot of finger wagging about, you don't know how lucky you are to be here. And you've got to feel good about where you are, or you're not going to do well. So uh, think about that wherever, you know, 
not every school is the right place for everybody, and this may not be the right place for you, but wherever you find that right place, it needs to be a place where you feel like these are my people, I belong here, and people are looking out for me. It will help your experience at college be so, so much better. Like that's the feeling I got when I came here and toured, and I'm still here four years later, sad that I have to graduate in West Virginia. <laughs> So that's, it's definitely a real thing and it helps you so much just make friends and love your class and love your college education. So I know that we are cutting close to five o'clock um, and I know there's still questions coming in the Q&A. I know Nikki has taken time to answer a lot of those, but I just want to kind of close it up for all of us. Um, just for admissions purposes, I do want to just extend an invitation to all of you that are listening um, as attendees to really check out the website that we've uh, put up with all of our virtual webinars that are going on this month. Uh, the website is uncw.edu slash admissions slash virtual. You will see the rest of the schedule. We do also have some housing webinars coming up. We will have another admissions overview uh, coming up as well. Um, and then we'll have another one of honors, but it'll be just kind of similar to this one. Uh, so don't feel the need to have to register again if, uh, if not. Um, but definitely check that out. Um, she's kind of listed out the emails for you guys, but I just want to extend a thank you to everyone from admissions uh, for the Honors College, for you guys in the faculty, um, for you, Sean, um, and for you student panelists. Thank you for being a part of today. Um, Nikki, I'll let you kind of finish it out if there's any last minute questions, um, and then we will uh, be done for the day. Nikki, you're muted. You're muted. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. I was just saying that the emails are on screen. Um, you can email any of us or you can email honors at uncw.edu and we'll get to your question as quick as we can. Um, we really do care about making this a good experience for you and making you um, certain that you choose the best path for you. Um, we hope that that's us, but we hope that we can answer any questions about whether it is. And we, I know that some of you have already deposited, so we're really, really excited to meet you in the fall. Um, and you'll meet some of these faces on the panel as well. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for attending with us. Um, I'll probably have a, a recording of this posted soon in case you, um, I don't know, want to show your mom or your friend or something <laughs> um, or forgot something we said. Um, but thank you again very much and we hope you have a great day. Thanks guys, have a good one. Thank you all, take care.